Hello, in this video we will be covering displaying the score on the screen. Because at the moment we are using the console to display the score, not very elegant, and when the user eventually gets your application with Flappy Bird or whether you adapt this to something else, they won't be able to, well, use it. Because chances are you'll probably disable the console, so that doesn't look very elegant, therefore they won't actually be able to see the score. So we want to implement scoring now, or the ability to see it. So if you go to your definition file, what we're going to do is load in a font file. And first to do that, we're going to create a path to the font file. So we're going to do hash define discord flappy underscore font. That's where I've named it and it's within the resources folder. So flappy underscore font underscore file path resources for slash fonts for slash flappy font.ttf and we will actually be using our asset manager to load it in before we do that let's create a new class and this is going to be for the hood and it's a basic hood it's just got a number on there which will be the score and that'll be updated but it'll create a updatable template that you can use for this game if you add more stuff on the hood or any other future game so just click or just create a new file as you normally would. So a header and a CPP file. And this is going to be called hood. So let's create that bad boy, add it to the target if you're on Mac. And now in the header file, what we're going to do is get rid of all this, put hash pragma once, hash include sfml for slash graphics.hpp hash include definition we are literally just including the standard stuff that we have been doing in most of our classes hash include game.hpp i'm going to put a namespace of sonar i'm going to put a class of hood i think you already guessed what it's going to be called going to have public and we're going to have a hood constructor which will take a game data ref if you're getting sick and tired of constantly doing the same thing again and again you can just copy and paste it from a different class and just update what needs to be updated so for void draw so this is going to be our draw method we are going to have a update score method which will take in an integer value which is our score we're going to have a private method i mean private set of variables which is going to be game data ref and this is going to be underscore data we're going to have sf text and this is going to be called score text and this will simply be the object that displays our text so now oh, What's this morning about? So it's saying something is wrong. So if I build it, so why is this morning? We have a we have a score text over here. Bill succeeded. Okay, that was weird then, but it's fine now. So if we go to the CPP file, so in the hood.cpp, what we're going to do is actually let's copy and paste these methods to save some time. Open up the CPP file. First of all, get rid of the comments. And we're going to put hash include string. And we're going to add a namespace of sonar. And now let's just pad these all out. So get rid of the semicolons, put curly braces, and we need the class name at the start, so hood. And start of that, and at the start of that. So now what we can do is for the score text, we can set the font. So we're going to be doing dot set font. And we are going to be using the asset manager. So assets dot get font, and we need to specify a name. We haven't actually loaded the font in at the moment, but we'll be loading it in. 
soon and we will call it flappy font now we will set an initial string so dot set string and for this it just takes a simple string and a zero to score text dot set character size so this is going to be well the size of our font 128 again i've experimented with these values i found that 128 looks nice not too big not too small but feel free to change them and feel free to abstract this out into a hash defined it's pretty cool you could really do that and now we're going to do underscore score text dot set fill color and this is going to be ff color white you can use a different color white is just a standard color i'm going to use now we're gonna set the origin and you might be thinking that oh we haven't set the origin for anything else and why are we doing it for this and the, the actual reason we didn't do for anything else was it was fine as it is but for this when we position stuff it's relative to the origin and when we update the score the score will get smaller and larger in terms of the actual footprint so the score of let's say eight would be smaller than the score of like 79 and if we are changing that up we would have to reposition if we if the origin is in the top left but if the origin is at the center of our score text then it will just look nicely and it'll look like it's always centered in the x-axis which is what we want so we are actually going to set it to the center of our score text to do that just do underscore score text dot get global bounds dot width divided by two and now we're gonna put a height value so the origin is now in the center of the score text we are going to position the score text now so score text dot set position dot set position and for this we're just going to do data window dot get size dot x divided by two so this is centered in the x-axis and because we've set the origin to the center of the object we don't need to move the object to the left or to the right at all because it's already going to be in the center for the y-axis we're not going to center it on the screen what we're going to do is still going to be relative to the window size what i found is if we get the height of the window we divide it by five so we move it 20 percent of the way down it looks really good it doesn't interfere with most of what we're doing and it just works really really well so in the draw method we are going to do something very simple just draw our score text like so and we're going to do underscore score text dot set string std string std to string this is a awesome method that allows you to convert a integer value to a string so we can actually set it as a string because otherwise how would we set it and you don't have to use anything like string stream which i have used before and it's just too much hassle but th this does the job that we want it to do so if you open up the game state dot hpp now what we're going to do is do hash include hood dot cpp or hood dot hpp i should say and we are going to create a hood object so hood asterisk hood and it's a pointer because we need to pass in a value because that's the only constructor that it has so if you go to your game state dot cpp in the constructor or the initialization method just duplicate this and instead of load texture we want load font and we are calling it flappy font because that's what we put in the hood class gonna put flappy font file path gonna just construct the hood to be equal to new hood underscore hood i mean underscore data like so after we set the score to zero we're gonna do hood 
update score. So this would take in the score value. And the reason we're updating the score like this is because in the HUD class, if you remember, we set it to zero. That was just a default string, and we just needed really that to be able to get some sort of origin with it. If, let's say, we by default wanted it to, to be a five, maybe the users watch some sort of video or they got some sort of bonus and it's by default it's going to start here at zero, then we would use this method. So if, we, if it's always there, setting the score at the start, it's just a great way of having the latest and greatest score. So now what we want to do is scroll down to where we actually increment the score, get rid of the C out. We're going to do HUD update score and we're going to set this to underscore score that is it so after we've incremented the score we would update the score like so and now we're going to do hood draw now let's see what we get build is successful fantastic click play okay so we have it saying it's something to do with the tree. So I'm going to take a guess that it is moaning about this. So we got the flappy font file path. So again, let's just make sure that the file path is correct. So go to resources, fonts, flappy font.ttf. So if we go to definitions and scroll down, flappy font.ttf that looks all good to me and now we'll go to the gamestate.cpp again so we've named it flappy font to go to hood and here make sure we've named it flappy font which we did which is fantastic so we've got the get font instead of get texture which is what we wanted so question is why did it break so what we're going to do is go to our game state we're just going to do a bit of debugging so we will actually comment out everywhere we use the hood and we'll identify the exact location they broke which I am positive was to do with the map so if we click play that loads fine so now if we go into here let's say if we create our hood as we have been doing click play okay so it's as soon as we do this so it's definitely suggesting to me okay what i'm going to do is copy and paste this just in case i've loaded or using this incorrect name even though we checked so if we go to hood.cpp so flappy font that is good and now in here just confirm we got data assets dot get font flappy font which is good so in here I'm actually going to comment out or just delete all of this a second so just to make sure it is this line that is messing things up and nothing else. Yep, it does look like it's this line. So if I were to comment this line out and run it again. Okay, so let's go to our asset manager. Have a look what we're doing. So we are loading in the font. So SL font, font. That looks all good. So font.load from file and font start at. That's looking pretty good to me. So we got the name, the file name. Okay. Let's continue looking at the gamestate.cpp. There's probably something really simple that we've just messed up here so flappy font file path let me just confirm that this is correct so resources fonts 
flappy font.ttf. I've got some other fonts here, so I'm actually going to try one of the other fonts just in case it's the font file, even though I have tried it and it should be a okay. And just click play. Hmm. So let's have a look again. So hood, new hood. That looks all good to me because we are constructing the hood with a new object of the hood. We're passing in the data which has already loaded in the font of flappy font and the path is flappy font for path. So that's all good. But as soon as it tries to set the font file, it just breaks. It absolutely does not like it whatsoever. Something about setting the font file using assets.getfont, it just breaks. So, ah, I figured it out. My bad, I forgot to initialize or set the data value by default like so. See, something so simple made us contemplate what the hell was going on. If I click play now, and it, it's not displaying because I commented everything out. So if I go to the gamestate.cpp, that's just a lesson to take away. Just make sure that even the simple stuff, like what we have been doing in literally every single video, is updated and you handle it. So now let's run it. We should get our score appearing on the screen. Click play. There we go. We got a massive score. That's always on top, so it says one, two, three, and let's just go game over. Game over. So that's it for this video on displaying the score on the screen. In the next few videos, we'll be covering actually implementing and going to the game over state. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link to the GitHub page, which contains all the source code from every part of this course. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.